Buenos dias. Anyang aseo. And also, I learned how to say it in Tagalog, and I can't remember it. I'm going to give it to you next week, though. But as they say in Fukuoka in Japan, Ohio. Let's start the day reading the Word of God. We're now in Paul's discussion of the Spirit and the flesh, the Holy Spirit who lives within us, but the counteraction of my old nature, fighting what the Spirit wants. He couldn't be more obvious. He says what the Spirit wants is opposed to what the flesh wants and vice versa. They do not like each other. Self just wants self-gratification, and when it hears the verse, uh, the soul that sinneth shall surely die, or what would it profit a man if he gained the whole world and lose his soul? It says, I, I think that's not real. You go for yourself. Follow your destiny. Follow your dream. But the Holy Spirit is saying, oh, Jesus came and laid down his life that your sins could be forgiven. Set your mind on things above, not on things below. See the counteraction of both? The flesh is about here and now and physical things and gratification. The spirit is about invisible things that last forever, but that are more real than this chair I'm sitting on. So now he begins to tell what the flesh does so that we can know where it's gaining ascendancy in our lives. Now, what the flesh does is quite plain. It shows itself in immoral filthy and indecent actions. Immorality, uncleanness, and indecency or orgies. So the first three uh, things grouped together, couplet, is about sexual immorality. The first word is the word in the Greek where we get our word, it's porneia, if I'm pronouncing it right in the Greek, I'm probably not, but whatever. It's where we get our word pornography. So it's any sexual act activity, intercourse, outside of marriage, and that includes homosexuality. I didn't say that. That's what the word means in the New Testament. So that's what the flesh can manifest itself in. Notice, as we read through these, we all have different developments of the flesh. And there are some people who are not such tempted, tempted that way, but they lie like a rug and their God is money and they don't even care about anything else. It's all going to be covered here. The next word is the word for uh, mental uncleanness. Pornography is linked to that, isn't it? Mental uncleanness. Uncleanness in thought life, which is going to produce eventually something in real life. And then also, the third word is complete abandonment and can also mean for food. Just, you know, they used to eat in the Roman Empire till they threw up. And then they would stick, sorry, a little gross, stick their fingers down, cause themselves to vomit so they could go back and eat. That was the world that the gospel first came to. So Paul says, those works of the flesh will, in certain people, try to gain ascendancy, but the Spirit gives us victory over them, the Holy Spirit who lives inside of us. We don't have to live that way. Now, notice, anyone who practices these things, Paul says, cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. It's not that Christians don't get trapped in a number of these things, but then they're sick with themselves. They're revolted. They cry to God. They want repentance. But anyone comfortably living in those three things, unrepentantly, and saying, that's not your business. Don't be a hater. Who are you to judge? That's a sign of someone who's never been born again. The Holy Spirit is not showing any sign of bearing any kind of fruit in their life. Next three. Um, idolatry and witchcraft. Two things couple it here together. And idolatry is putting anything before God. Something more important than God. Could be you, could be me. 
It could be money. It could be our families. An idol is something that comes between me and God. Our creator and sustainer is not numero uno. We try to make him numero dos or tres or ocho. That's idolatry. And then witchcraft, which is the same word in the Greek where we get our word pharmacy or pharmaceutical drugs. Some of the expert commentators say that drinking uh, kind of drugs were part of the idolatrous feasts that were part and parcel of idolatry when Paul was writing. Sexual immorality was. Prostitutes worked the temples, but also in, by, in, in taking in uh, stimulants, drugs. Some people think it's a perfect application for our, our fascination with people who are zoned out on, on drugs of one kind or another. That's a work of the flesh. The Holy Spirit never led anybody to smoke weed, never. So Paul's telling it straight, not caring what the listeners, I'll give you one just last one, then we'll save the rest for tomorrow. Uh, and witchcraft. The next one is people become enemies and they fight. More literally is hatred and strife. There are people who have a PhD in hatred from their flesh. They are haters. How does it happen? Well, you have a fight with someone, you don't get it settled, or you can just hate another race. Flesh likes to just hate another race. Like, I, I hate black people, I hate white people. I hate those Asians. Where'd that come from, God? God who is love? No, the minute you and I are dealing with hate in our lives, we know, whoa, that's the flesh. Don't blame it automatically on a demon or the devil or the world. The, the context here is this is a work of the flesh. This is how the flesh acts out. Hate and loves to hate. I know people that not only hate, they don't want to, they don't want to give up their hate. They like hate. And if you mention the name of the person they hate, you just ruin their day. Ah, oh, why'd you have to say her name, his name? Why that reaction? Because I hate that person. God is love, so imagine where hate comes from. Ooh, there's a thought. God is love. Dios es amor. Pero, I wish I knew the word for hate. But where would hate come from if God is love? It's a work of the flesh, but its origin is Satan himself. Satan himself, working through the flesh and stirring up you know, you watch the news sometimes. You can't get any objective news. News now is to stir up hatred of the other side, whatever the other side is. Republicans hate Democrats. Democrats hate Republicans. You just don't disagree with someone in our culture. You hate them. You demonize them. They're from hell. But thank God we have Jesus. Shake off that hate, get rid of that, repent of it. Go to God today and say, God, I hate people or I hate something or someone. Forgive me, he'll cleanse you. How can you live and have peace and joy if you're a Christian and you're hating folks? No, thank God for love that we find in Jesus Christ. See you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.